to tell everything. So yeah, I'm Yuri Vermeulen from uh, Claro Partners. Um, if you see or, or hear anything interesting, please share it on uh, Twitter, uh, at Claro Partners, or with hashtag IoT and uh, IoT BCM. Um, so Claro Partners is a business innovation firm that is helping corporations and startups to uh, navigate disruptive uh, shifts in society and business. We do this over uh, three areas, social sign to uncover uh, people's needs, uh, experience design to translate those needs in uh, offers, and to um, and then those offers are translated into the business strategy of the company, or we create a new business model to support this. So we are an international team from people over, uh, all over the world with uh, many different backgrounds. Um, we research and we develop service design in many shifts, big shifts. Uh, today I will focus on uh, the internet connecting everyone to the internet connecting everything. Um, so we have five key, key takeaways that I hope I can share in these 10 minutes from our 10 months project which was with Intel. Um, and we have been interviewing uh, key leaders, key thinkers, innovators, makers, developers all over the spectrum of Internet of Things to develop uh, this point of view. And one of them is here, it's Alicia from the Belgium. I don't know who I Hi, we have interviewed you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and some people really changed, shifted our thinking. One of them was Florian Michaelis of Auto Idea Labs. He said, the Internet of Things is about the Internet expanding into the physical world. And that might sound very obvious, but actually, for us, for us, it meant that the Internet of Things is not something like many people say, like an industry or a vertical or an opportunity. It's something that is actually uh, influencing all industries, all uh, verticals, and we think that no company which is offering services or products today will escape uh, the Internet of Things. Uh, the second one is... Oh, yeah, I left that out. <laughs> so, the first key takeaway is uh, the Internet of Things is nascent. It's, it's not there yet. And uh, the reason we say that is because today, the conversation is mainly about Internet of Things. So people creating a, a network, like Sigfox, who is building quite an impressive uh, network of low bandwidth, and companies like Electrocamp and many more who really try to get devices online. But the thing is that those devices maintain uh, a platform on their own. Uh, they're not able to share or they don't allow to share beyond their own platform. And we think that the Internet of Things might be a lot more interesting when, we be, when all those devices would be uh, sharing data with each other and the services built on top of them. So that are the Internet of Things from today. But we are also seeing a shift in this. And companies like Nike with the Nike Plus platform or uh, Nest with this thermostat are opening up their devices and their platforms to developers. So it's not only their service that is making use of the data and the device, but it's also the imagination of developers and the skills of developers that can build their own apps on top of this. And this makes the Internet of Things, we believe, uh, really interesting. And we hope to see more and more and more of this. Uh, the second takeaway is that the Internet of Things will not be built by one company, and the one company will not have uh, one role. So there will be many different players. We have an interactive landscape where you can see uh, a lot of boxes, and those boxes mean uh, value propositions. Inside those boxes, you can find companies who are offering this uh, value proposition. And if you want to take a look at it, you can. For one day, we, we give full access to the landscape. So you have to go to our website, Clara Partners. And uh, on the bottom left, you can see the credentials, which is uh, IoT Barcelona, PCM, and IoT Meetup. And there you can uh, have, uh, for one full day, access. You can find this also on SlideShare, so if you don't try it, uh, well, you can find it. Uh, the third takeaway is that the real value of Internet of Things uh, will not come from the technology itself, not just from bringing devices online, but really built uh, from the services, from the service built on top of those. And uh, a quick example is the, the camera right now is actually still a pretty dumb thing. It's, uh, it's a camera that's not able to connect online. And imagine that this uh, Nikon reflex camera would be able to connect online. That would mean that a brand like Nikon has uh, an ongoing, uh, real-time uh, uh, relationship with its customer, 
where right now only on the point of sale you have a relation with your customer and that's it. But when a brand has real-time access to its customers, this opens up a whole new set of uh, opportunities for services towards them. The same thing for uh, for retailers and uh, also for the user itself, where right now it's pretty difficult, for example, to to share pictures and other stuff. Uh, with a connected camera, all these things become a lot more interesting for the user. It, it's just an example to emphasize that the connected product is more than just a, da a data online. It's the services that enables this connectivity that's, uh, that's the interesting part. Takeaway four is uh, that a significant part of the IoT will evolve from the bottom up. This will not be like uh, so we see an analogy with the PC world and the mobile world, where in the PC world uh, it is all about big corporations, so okay, Apple and Microsoft were startups, but in those times it was very difficult for, for a developer or an entrepreneur to really get software online, to build applications and to, to find a channel to, uh, to sell this. But then with the mobile industry, those uh, services became available to the app stores from iOS and Android, and this actually brought a, a total new perspective to the role that people and the role that developers are playing in this space. And we think that uh, in the Internet of Things it will not only be the services that will be developed on top of the connected devices like we see with Nest and with uh, Nike Plus, but we also think that because of uh, evolutions like 3D printing, companies like Dragon Innovation and Seed Studio in China, that developers will have a lot more access to, to build services, to build devices their own, and then the role of big corporations is who provide the connectivity, who provide the technology, will be more a collaborative one rather than a top-down one and offering everything to an end consumer. They will have to enable uh, developers. That's what, uh, that's what I believe. Then the fifth key takeaway is that uh, there is a multiplied complexity, we call it. So if you are coming, if you're an existing company, for example, you're building web services or websites, or, or applications, and you want to offer an Internet of Things device, you will have to get into that physical space. And that physical space uh, means technology, means supply chain, means manufacturing, means uh, physical cha sales channels. And for companies co coming from the digital side, it's very hard to figure out that, uh, that part. And we have this quote uh, from, yeah, I forgot his name. Uh, but he said basically that uh, from Dragon Innovation, the CEO of Dragon Innovation, he said it's hard for those for those people to figure out the unknown unknowns. So what do we don't know? How, how do we start with it? And they, they discover it along the way. So we have developed this IoT canvas where uh, developers and people starting in the Internet of Things space can see all the areas they will have to think about. And a very important thing is to align because you have. You have a digital sales channel, you have a physical sales channel, and to align these services, to align your revenue model and your cost model, it's a, it's a very hard uh, exercise. And that's what makes the difference between a physical product or a digital service. Uh, the multiplied complexity is hard. So, I have hopefully a few more minutes. I have to announce three things, which will be pretty fast. <laughs> So, uh, first, with all these tools, we are not keeping them for ourselves. We organized IoT Labs in Chicago during Web Visions. Uh, it was a big success, and we hope to bring it to Barcelona as well to do an IoT Lab here. Uh, the second thing is, is that Claro is launching an accelerator in Barcelona. Uh, we will be uh, announcing more of this soon, and you can talk with the many Claros who, who are here uh, current, current today. So there will be 10 teams selected from all the, uh, the applications. It will be a 23-month um, program with a 50k investment. And there will be, at the end of that, there will be a demo day where you can present your ideas and your, and your concept to, the, to mentors and investors. Then the third part is, we, we're actually still uh, extending the research of IoT. And we are uh, organizing a workshop here in Barcelona, uh, or this Thursday, if there are people who are from outside Barcelona or in the, the next coming weeks. So we're searching for developers who have experienced the Chively, everything, all, uh, an online platform together with hardware. And we offer you a 50 euro gift voucher if you are willing to participate in this workshop. And if you are interested, you can contact me at yuri at carapartners.com or via Twitter at uh, theyuris. So yeah, that was it. Questions? Any shy big developer? Anyone? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.